What up, everybody? It's Britt here, and today we will be doing Britney's book review number seven on Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone. The publisher of this book is Greenleaf Book Group Press. This book was 258 pages. It took me about a week and a half to read, but I took mad notes because this one was so good. Overall impression of this book, absolutely loved it. This one was out of the park, a great phenomenal book, rating five stars all day. Statement about the author, Grant Cardone is a huge mentor of mine, a real estate investor, entrepreneur, he is a businessman, he owns many companies. His net worth is reflective of his real estate as well as his businesses. His expertise has been used by numerous Fortune 500 companies and will be for decades. Selling is not just products or service, Grant is a positive boss. You have to risk uncomfortable situations to get what you want in life. He has his own private jet. His wife Elena likes to hang out at the beach and go for spa days. They are awesome. Great detail of the author's thesis and summary of the main points. Well, this book, the main thing probably is that sales is more about selling to yourself than it is to the customer. Obviously, you have to sell to the customer, but before you even get there, you have to sell to yourself. And I think that's where a lot of people forget and miss that step and they don't realize how important and vital that is. Confidence is key in sales. You have to ask the tough questions and get down to the business and find out what they want, why they want it, what's holding them back. You have to get used to it and face your fears. We are all saleswomen. We are selling our ideas, our visions, our perceptions, our way in life. The principles are the same in selling. You really have to be convinced of your product or service and that it is the best one out there, even for the price, even if it is a little more, that there is value to that and getting it from you. Do not doubt that. Sales isn't taught in school or even offered. Grant says, it is to my observation that the most vital skills needed for one's life aren't taught in schools. Hmm. Sounds a lot like Robert Kiyosaki, another billionaire entrepreneur, mentor of mine. Please see Fake for more information about that. Grant learned more from business programs, audio, books, podcasts, all of those things more than he ever learned in school. I know salespeople who are making more money than heart surgeons with far less liability and stress. Communicating, persuading, and closing are vital skills. Selling, communicating, and persuading others will make you enjoy your life a lot more. No dream has ever become a reality without first selling it to others. You need to be committed, highly dedicated, and great. You have to be willing to learn. Prediction is very key in sales. The pros know how to do it by predicting the objections before they even surface. Record encounters and take full responsibility. Have an objection notebook. What are the objections? Write them down. How do you fix them? All masters can successfully predict objections. Record yourself on video and watch it. Watch your facial expressions. Watch what you say, your responses, your tone, your voice. This will increase your confidence and sales. Observation is how to predict. Observe where you're not getting your way in life and start taking notes. I am the best saleswoman ever. Commitment is fully diving in 100% losing sight of all other options. The only reason a person won't enjoy selling is if they don't fully understand it and therefore they aren't good at it. Sell yourself. That's the key to being one of the greats. You need to be sold on your products and service in order to sell them to others. You must never allow even into consideration that anyone can even compete with you. You have to be completely sold on your product and know that it is the best one and you won't consider or allow others to consider any other option. Grant has been accused of asking astronomical prices, but he feels it is worth it and he would pay it himself. And that is more important than the other thoughts and opinions. The conviction you have of your products and service is far more important than the convictions others have of their facts and figures. The real issue becomes who is more sold on what he believes to be true? Who is the most convincing? It will always be the one who is more sold. You've got to be unreasonable. Do not even attempt selling to somebody else until you yourself are fully sold. To the degree that you are not sold, you will have difficulty selling to others. Anytime you have trouble selling, 
Look no further than your own ability and conviction in what you are selling. If you've ever had something creep into your mind that made you doubt yourself or your product or service, find out what that was and throw it out like yesterday's garbage. If you wouldn't buy the product or you have negative considerations about it, to that degree, you will always fail. You must be sold. You must know that it is the right thing, the right product, and that it will benefit the person. Are you so sold on your product that you think it's detrimental and unethical not to convince someone to buy from you? Get to that level and watch your levels soar. When a customer doesn't buy your product, do you actually feel bad for him and lose sleep at night feeling like you've screwed him over? He talks about the law of attraction, of course. Um, he says focus on the positive and not the negative. Same within relationships. If you focus on the positive of that person instead of all the negative, watch the results change. Watch them change. It's crazy. It's always great to buy the products yourself because actions speak louder than words. It's almost never price. It's typically more unspoken things. If they say it's price, there is usually more to it than that. What it ultimately is, is that they don't have confidence that your product is right or that it is worth the extra money if it is more money. Always agree with the customer. Even if they're wrong, go up in price if a buyer says no. Maybe they don't think it'll make a difference. Maybe they don't want to pay that little amount because they're unsure of the value for that price. They'd rather spend more money to make a good decision or they'd rather spend more on a donation to make sure that it actually makes a difference. Show them the inventory and then read their body language, their facial expressions. See if it really is the price or maybe is it something more and then go from there. And then you can keep shopping and maybe take a look at other products rather than lower the amount for that product because then people might think, well, if you're lowering the value, then it must not be as valuable. Price is not your problem. You are your problem. Customers don't stop sales. Sales people do. If someone says, well, it's expensive, you can say, well, I agree, it is a lot of money. However, there is no shortage of money on the planet, but there is a shortage of people who have found their true love and wanted to show their expression of that. Now, how would you like to handle this? If they love it, they'll do anything to have it. It is a need for them. Some unspoken objections for a house, for example, could be, is this the right house? Is this the right house for us? Is this gonna make all of our dreams come true? Is this really gonna fulfill our potential? If we're gonna spend this much money, maybe we should spend a little more and get our dream home. That last one is actually 50% of the reason as to why people say price is the issue. When they say it's too much, what they mean is it's too much for that product. To be an effective salesperson, you have to believe in human beings. You have to have a positive outlook about them. You have to believe people are good and want to make the right decision. They're like you. They make good decisions, bad decisions. They overpay and they love it. They want confidence about their purchase. They want to be admired for it, respected. They want to make good decisions. There is an abundance of money in this world. Literally, there is a surplus. So the amount of money in this world, it's like taking a bucket of water from the ocean. It's astronomical. There's no lack of money. There's a lack of creativity. There's enough money in this world that everyone could have a billion dollars. Rich people don't cling to money. They know that there's a flow and that it is to be used. So it's easier for others to part with theirs as well. Push the hard sell. They'll thank you later. Love your product, love your service, work the price, make it happen. You can mirror someone to keep the conversation going. Know how to stall over and handle objections and continue without appearing to pressure the customer. Second money is much easier than first money. If they've already spent money, they're already over budget, why not spend a little more and get the top one? People like that. Subconsciously, they want the best, especially if they're already overspending. Grant congratulated him and said, you know you're gonna spend more than that in your lifetime. Your heart is in the right place. You're a generous man. Why not just do the rest now? The man smiled and said, you're right and did 20 times the amount, 200,000. People want the best. They love to show off, be consumers. This is America. Do it, ask. It's the dessert and it's easy. Money is a mental issue, not a shortage issue. I'll have a difficult time getting money from people if they have a difficult time getting it from me. 
You are in the people business. No people before the products. It's far more important. People only care how much you know when they know how much you care. Be interested in them over selling to them. Be more interested in them than your sales, your commission, your product. Communication isn't just talking. What do they want? What is important? Why is it important? How do they want to be spoken to? What is going to cause them to take action? Ask questions to find out what's right for them. What do you want their product to do that your present one does not? There's an 80-20 principle. What that means is 80% of your profits will come from 20% of your sales. From 20% of the sales work people. People are most interested in themselves. Agree with the customer always if you want them to agree with you. Even if they say they need more time to think about it or they are dead wrong in their facts. Agree with them, level with them, and then suggest something else. It'll move them close to you rather than push them away. It's more about them than your ego and being right. See it from their perspective. Try agreeing with everyone all day. Say you're right. I can understand that. I see where you're coming from. It is a lot of money, I agree. Your new roof is going to last you for 30 years. No more leaks or repairs. You're gonna have to do it sooner or later, so why not now? Take responsibility for the sales. No blame game. Victims do not win. It's your fault. Accept the buyer's distrust, understand it, and take responsibility for it. And don't take it personally. Have paper, documentation, and proof that you are telling the truth. People wanna see it in writing. They believe what they see a lot more than they believe what they hear. Real-time data is also a lot more valuable than past data. Always put what you say in writing. Insist on writing it down. What you've said, promised, implied, suggested, write it down. Anytime you're going for the clothes, put it in writing. Show proof in success stories. He had an evidence manual that he would show people about his past sales and what people thought of him and doing business with him. Use third-party data as much as possible. Encourage them to research there with you instead of going home and doing it on their own later. He even encourages posting competitors pricing right there so they don't have to leave. That's transparency. That's good business. Service is about giving. Give attention. Give your time, energy, effort, understanding. Fix their problems. People pay for service. A problem is just an opportunity for future sales. Most people will not buy unless someone asks them to, and people aren't going to say yes to someone who quits asking. Persist. Push the hard sell. Persist even if it gets hard, uncomfortable. Use your power base, your friends, your family. The closer they are to you in the center, the easier it is. Contact them, meet up for lunch, restore, rebuild. The sale will happen naturally. Lunch is the key to success. Go out, be social, but don't go out with business partners and coworkers. They're not gonna buy from you. Take out clients. Positive people are irresistible. Attitude is everything. The positive people are luckier. He talks about the media hype and how it creates the flu because everyone's thinking about it. Everyone's scared, thinking they have it until finally they do. It's created, manifested. Guard your positive attitude from people's negative agendas to bring it down. It's not enough to be positive. You have to actually protect yourself from those who are being negative. Attitudes are like a disease and they are contagious. Stay away from negative people, even if that's family or friends. Avoid the media, avoid drugs and alcohol, avoid hospitals and doctors as much as possible. People get sicker there. They are sick factories rather than places to heal people. Just look at the people walking out of them. Treat negative talk like garbage. Put a sign in your office or home that reads no negative talk zone. Don't allow anyone to leave their trash in your environment. Start a negative diet. No negative thoughts, ideas, or talk for 24 hours. When you fail, become aware of it, write it down, and start over. Create awareness and discipline. A great attitude is the most valuable thing in life. Some quick, nice greetings are, welcome, thank you for coming here. What can I get you information on? Great to see you today and thank you for your time. Build rapport after if the client chooses to do so. Show and pick products based on their wants and needs. The sales process is finding out who are you? What do you want? Why do you want it? What do I have that will fulfill your wants and needs? How do I show it to you so that you can make sense of it? Make an offer that can be funded and then close, deliver, and follow through. The best sales processes are shorter rather than longer. The salesperson should be sensitive to the client's time. 
However, they should have as much time as the client needs. It's all about them. The sales process should satisfy first the customer, then the salesperson, and then management in that order. It will never get further if it does not first satisfy the customer. If you know them, don't get too caught up in small talk and never get around to business. Don't have the demo too long or too short. Focus on what they value. Show products based on their wants and needs and don't just have them walk around aimlessly. Always make a proposal 100% of the time within 40 minutes of them walking in the door. Be honest with yourself about the sale and not getting it. Don't listen to coworkers about, oh, it's the economy, they're cheap, blah, blah, blah. No, take responsibility. You must have a social media presence. You can't just be on there, but you have to be thought of. Make the sale, see it happening, visualize them owning it going to the table to close. Each week, write a list of why people should own your product or service and why they're worth the investment. What do you bring that sets your proposal apart from others? Assume the close. Follow me and we'll get that started for you. Sign here. Make it difficult to say no. Always persist the close. Can I face my fears? What do I fear most today? And then do that first thing in the morning. Get it out of the way. Call that call that you fear. Stay cool, calm, and collected. Even if they have an episode and start screaming, have emotional IQ. Find out what problem they want to solve with your product. Don't waste a half hour building rapport. Depression is mislabeled inactivity. Most people only buy after being asked five times. Can I get your signature here, please? Listen selectively. Clients lie and make up excuses like, oh, I have to talk to the wife. Don't believe it. Ask questions. What is your income? How long have you worked there? Who is the decision maker? Why can't you do this? Don't be afraid to pry and ask intense questions. That's how you're gonna find out what's really going on. So you can address and handle it. Evaluations of strengths and weaknesses of this book. This book was loaded with strengths. I absolutely loved it. Um, the only weaknesses I could think of was that my hand was hurting from taking so many notes because it was so good. <laughs> He asked a lot of questions at the end of the book, so I really like when authors do that to test your knowledge and then you have to think of the answers. It's one thing to read, but it's another to regurgitate. Contribution or bias, I absolutely, totally agree with everything he said in this book. Totally spot on. Grant knows what he's talking about. That's probably why he's worth over $300 million. Actually, that was when this book was written. Now it is 1.3 billion. <laughs> Evidence of this is I obviously read books all the time, tons of sales, marketing, all kinds of books, and this is by far, hands down, the best one I have ever read on the subject. Final assessment, this book is absolutely amazing. If you want to increase your sales, really just increase your life, have a better life, um, your persuasion, confidence, this is the book for you. As always, contact me for some cliff notes and or just watch my book reviews. <laughs> Any recommendations? Well, of course, get this book. Check out Grant Cardone, he is awesome. Also, please see my other book review on the mind of the buyer. I just did that, that one is number six. If you are interested in the subject, there's more info as well. Thank you guys so much. Get correct.